Hey, good afternoon, everyone. With Carolina Weather Authority, this is meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg with the latest on Hurricane Laura and anything else that could be in the pipeline for us here in the southeast. Before I go further, if I could ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and invite your friends to do so as well. Many of you guys are watching from different parts of the country and world, and I'm sure you've got a lot of interest in what's going on here in the U.S., especially if you, you're going to be buying gas in the next couple of weeks. Um, this definitely is something that could raise your eyebrows. And uh, visit us at carolinawxauthority.com for our latest articles. We've got one on Laura here and what we're expecting to occur. Uh, now, Laura is the only system on the map. Marco fell apart. Um, that was a bit surprising, but I see why it did it, looking at the meteorology. Laura, on the other hand, is strengthening and has been uh, upgraded to hurricane strength earlier in the day today. And uh, moving to the west-northwest, heading towards the northwestern gulf here tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Nothing else on the map right now, but we do have more that we'll be watching for you guys um, after this temporary lull behind Laura. So what is fueling Laura is a lot of warm water. That's why she strengthened the hurricane's strength. She's been over warm water, but she's equally spent a lot of time over land. Uh, she tracked across um, southwest Puerto Rico, across the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and then Cuba yesterday. And that is uh, basically more than half her life has been interacting with land. So now she's finally been able to break the chains and get out completely over water for the first time in her lifespan um, since forming out here in 30 plus degrees Celsius water. That's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Very warm water which supports hurricanes and major hurricanes. And where she's headed it actually gets a little bit warmer in the next 24 hours. So that's definitely an eyebrow raiser for you guys. Uh, the ocean heat content is quite high across the western Gulf, uh, very high in the Northwest Caribbean, of course. Um, so Laura's now in a place where she's got a lot of deep, warm water to churn up and certainly cause problems as she does so. Uh, Recon was in the storm earlier, and I want to show this to you guys because they flew a few planes through it. Um, they looked, of course, at the intensity of Laura and saw that she, in fact, did have enough uh, winds aloft to be classified as a Category 1 storm. Uh, but another plane flew through and took um, observations of the surrounding ambient environment of the storm to see what the wind flows like, which can basically the forecast models take the data the planes are gathering and they use it to produce what they think will be their best forecast. And that's why we've seen some adjustments in the forecast over the last couple of days. Because remember, a few days ago, this looked like it was going to be a Florida storm uh, and then eventually a Louisiana storm. And now it looks like more of a Texas slash Louisiana storm. A lot of that's because these planes are out here flying and getting valuable data, and uh, that is being used and formulated into advanced uh, forecast models. You can see northwest of Laura this morning some fairly light wind, and out ahead of where the track is going some fairly light wind as well, which of course means the wind shear is fairly low. It's not zero, but it is fairly low, and that favors a storm that can strengthen fairly steadily over this warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the latest visible satellite image. You can see Laura is wrapping up. This is tropicaltidbits.com, a very busy site this time of year. And you can see um, the northwest side of the storm is not looking as healthy as the southeast, but we are finally starting to see the wind shear relax just a little bit. The outflow is starting to grow, and we do believe in the center of this storm we will see intensification and probably an eye developing tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, we may actually see it before the sun goes down tonight um, as uh, the pressure continues to drop in Laura. There'll be another plane going in to investigate later today. We'll get more of a feel for how much the storm is intensifying or if it's kind of settled down for now, we'll intensify again. But um, all signs point to intensification. The track uh, definitely um, shows um, a major hurricane potential hitting Texas and Louisiana near the state line late Wednesday night, about 2 or 3 in the morning. Hurricane warnings include the Houston-Galveston area and go all the way over to Vermilion Bay in central Louisiana. And then tropical storm warnings all the way to southeastern Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana, as I call it, that's where I grew up. And um, definitely you'll see a left turn, you'll see a right turn coming, but the question is, is that going to be closer to Houston or in Louisiana? And what I will show you guys is that Houston definitely um, should be taking the storm seriously. And I think if you're near the water, you need to be looking at evacuating. If you're watching this video right now and you have friends in Galveston, Boulevard or around the bay, I think they should evacuate, to be honest. I would rather them be a little more prepared than they need to be than vice versa. Uh, let's take a look at the models, and they have tracked farther west and showing many of them going into southeast Texas or right on the state line in Cameron Parish, Louisiana. Uh, but we are going to show you some differences in those as well. Intensity forecasts, all the models pretty much agree on strengthening. 
Um, some of these are kind of outliers, but a lot are going category two, three, or even high end four, and then weakening after landfall in about 36 to 42 hours from now. Now, what I do want to show you guys from weathernerds.org are ensembles, and the European ensemble remains on the left side of things. It is, of course, taking the same data the other models are, but it thinks that high pressure systems a little stronger and that this storm could end up farther west. And this is why I'm extremely, um, extremely concerned for those of you in Houston. We could have a major problem in Houston um, if this, uh, this, these tracks work out with this storm hitting close to where Alicia hit. Um, the GFS is trending west as well. You can see the ensemble members um, are now focused on Beaumont, Port Arthur, but several farther to the west of that. Really nothing hitting Louisiana anymore. Um, and then we'll show you the UK Met from earlier today, and that one's still a little bit farther east, but the trend is pushing everything off to the west. So that definitely is a concern in Houston, one I think we need to take seriously. Um, if we like, look at the h work model, we can see that it is showing lower intensifying into the 980s pressure, which is a solid Category 1 strength this afternoon. And then tonight, dropping into the 970s, getting us close to Category 2 strength, and then rapidly intensifying basically between... Um, 10 o'clock tonight and about 6 a.m. tomorrow, dropping the pressure by over 20 millibars and getting close to Category 3 intensity. And by tomorrow morning, it does have, have it as a major Category 3 storm. This is a little bit stronger than some of the global models, but it's been very consistent. Now showing a Category 3, almost Category 4 storm by the end of the day on Wednesday. And then finally leveling off right before landfall as wind shear out of the north could be keeping the storm from strengthening right up until it hits. But as it gets to this strength, it's going to be big enough to cause major issues. Now, this model takes it up to um, Sabine Pass. Um, like I showed you, those ensembles are just a little bit farther west by a degree of longitude. And that's going to make a huge difference as to who gets the worst weather. But uh, southwest Louisiana definitely going to get battered out of this. If you guys remember Hurricane Ike or Hurricane uh, Rita, this one will probably seem like a familiar blow to you guys. I guess if there's some good news is that the storm is moving fairly steadily and much quicker than those storms and will be weakening quickly over land. Eventually it looks like it'll make its way towards Arkansas on Friday morning and then into the Tennessee Valley Friday afternoon. Uh, the model hasn't been run out quite that far, but could be in the Carolinas or Virginia by Saturday morning. Let's look at some storms that have affected Houston and the upper Texas coast to kind of get a gauge where this one will be potentially. Um, and we can kind of compare a little bit because I think that's kind of helpful to see what climatology can give us. Hurricane Alicia hit in August of 1983. That was the first storm of the entire year. We're on L. We actually went to M, so quite a different season it was then. Um, but that was 37 years ago. I'm 38, so I was super young when that happened. Um, but here's Galveston. Here's the eye of the storm. It actually hit farther down the coast, but all the really nasty weather on the northeast side hit Galveston and went up into the Houston area. Um, here's a look at the satellite of where it made landfall at 3 a.m. on August 18th, 1983. So we're only a week beyond that, um, climatology-wise. And I don't think this storm's going to go quite this far down the coast, but it may be similar in intensity. It may kind of look a little bit like Alicia did. Uh, next, we'll look at Hurricane Rita. That was a storm that was very big as a Category 5 and weakened a bit here as it encountered a little more wind shear. But it caused a lot of storm surge and problems going all the way over close to New Orleans. Um, it made landfall just east of Sabine Pass, right on the Louisiana border. And all the worst weather affected places like Lake Charles. Beaumont was affected, Port Arthur, of course. But this one kind of spared Houston the worst. And it was actually worse in Louisiana. And then we'll take a look at Ike. And that was 12 years ago in September. And that, I think, was a high-end Category 2 storm. So probably a little weaker than what this storm's going to be. And that one drilled the Houston area, but I think the worst ended up being just to the east uh, over the Boulevard Peninsula. Um, you can see um, I found a news article I dug up where the worst of the weather was over the East Bay and into Chambers County and Jefferson County. And this one could take that track. And this landfall was at 2 in the morning. So Alicia was 3 in the morning. This was 2 in the morning. And um, that's Ike, of course. And Rita was also, um, yeah, 2 in the morning. So nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. I think I heard a song about that once. So we're, we're not in rare air here, but we're definitely concerned if you're in Houston. You may want to think about evacuating at this point if you're near the water. Actually, we're getting close to that being too late. Uh, so we can see the wind shear map shows light wind shear where this anti-cyclone, this high-pressure system aloft, is located. And that's going to shift westward and push the light wind shear into the western gulf. The wind shear does pick up near the Texas coast, so that's kind of good news. Um, but it may be too little too late. 
Um, rainfall forecast, the heaviest rain will track along and east of the center of the storm, potential for up to 10 inches of rain in southwest Louisiana, including Lake Charles, Cameron, um, and 7 inches up through western Louisiana, including Shreveport area, and then up close to Little Rock. Um, and eventually some of that heavy rain spreads eastward into the southern Appalachians. So uh, we could have some heavy rain in the mountains by Friday night, Saturday morning. And then finally, let's look at the African satellite, and we've got some more waves to keep an eye on. And this one has some potential down the road to develop, and the surface and upper air patterns uh, tend to favor this one going east of Florida and threatening the southeast coast, but it's way too soon to make that judgment call at this point. Uh, but for Labor Day weekend, you'll want to watch us here as we'll keep you posted on what could be a threat into the southeast coast um, during Labor Day or right after. So that's the next one to watch, and there's more behind it. Um, very dry air in the way of it, so it's not going to develop anytime soon, but probably around the very end of August and beginning of September, that's the next one on the map. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me, and I will say, if you haven't already, please invite your friends to watch us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel for the latest. Stay safe, and God bless.